Good evening, everyone. So before we get started, I need your help with something. <clears throat> My mother and aunt traveled 150 miles tonight to come and hear me talk for six minutes. So you can help me show my appreciation to them and give them a huge round of applause for showing up. <laughs> my mom was a little like confused by it last night. I was like, yeah, it's about six minutes. I can't believe they're limiting me. And she's like, I'm driving 150 miles for six minutes. And I was like, I promise you'll love it. And she loved it. So thank you all for being here, but let's do this. So I want to begin by thanking you all for being here, um, because we, coming together tonight and listening to other, each other's stories, this is what changing the world looks like. When we come together and we listen, we open up avenues for connection, so that when we go on and to change the world, we already have a better understanding of each other. So I was 12 years old when I told my mom for the first time that I had the dream of being governor of Montana, and she replied to me hesitantly, oh, that's great. But don't think you're going to get in there and change anything. And I spouted back to her, Mom, you are absolutely right. Unless somebody like your son shows up and is the exception to the rule. You see, changing the world begins with a dream. I ask people all the time what their wildest dream is, and nobody ever has a bad one. Their dreams benefit themselves and the people around them. So the first step in creating a better tomorrow is having a dream and courageously standing up for that dream. So I learned a long time ago that I couldn't change the world unless I changed myself. So I came up with this motto, it's be love. It's my firm belief that love can conquer all and to be love in the past, the present, and the future. And I got a tattoo on my wrist to remind me of that. So I derived this motto from the lessons I learned as a kid. And I learned these lessons around my family's dinner table. It's where my family laughed and cried. It's where we unfortunately hurt each other, but it's where we fortunately healed each other. Um, I grew up in a house with my mother, my aunt, and my grandmother, so it was a lot of estrogen. <laughs> but I learned a very important lesson from each one of these women. My grandmother taught me that I had to pay attention, that whether being a, grabbing a dish from the cupboard or listening to a friend who was going through a hard time, that we had to pay attention because everything matters. My mom taught me that everyone gets invited to the party. For my 10th birthday party, I only want to invite the cool kids out of the 20 classmates. And she scolded me and said, how would you like to feel if you were the one that was left out? Lastly, my Aunt Karen taught me how important it was to show up for people. She's always been the rock of the family, and she's the person that always shows up and does the right thing regardless of the situation. My aunt got very sick and almost passed on multiple times. And during the time of her illness, all the love that she'd given out to the world came back to her in ways that she never expected. So now that you know that I have a dream, and you know where I learned the lessons to pursue that dream, let's talk about how I worked with a group of people to chase after it. And it starts with this kid, Zach Brown. He approached me in May, yeah. He approached me in May, and he told me he was running for House District 63, and he asked me to be his volunteer coordinator. I volunteered for the job, because I figured, how hard could it be? <clears throat> there was something I learned through all my involvement in student organizations, that my generation, we don't show up for ideology. When we ask our peers, would you die for this country, they hesitate. But you say, would you take a bullet for your best friend? They say, in a heartbeat. That people show up for how you make them feel, they don't show up for what you say or what you do. So I'm a firm believer in the whole one person can change the world thing, but I think that needs to be clarified. One person can begin a change in the world, but we need many to bring it to completion. So I was a volunteer coordinator, and I needed numbers in order for this project to happen. So my first task was to make some hard ass. So what did I do? I called up all my best friends, and there's nothing a gay man likes more than all of his ladies. <clears throat> so I called them all up, and I asked them for their help. And the crazy thing is, is that nobody said no. That everybody up here, plus so many more, were instrumental in some capacity of making this change happen, whether it be just emotional support or directly knocking doors for us. So with all of our friends on board, we headed off on our journey. And changing the world is just like any other journey. You never know what's going to be around the bend. But it's important that we focus on the relationships with people so that we can survive the ups and downs and our movement can continue on. But now that we had all of our friends on board, the issue that can arise is that it becomes kind of exclusive. But my mother taught me that everyone gets invited to the party. So along the way, we had people wanting to join the team, and we had to include them fully, because it's not about getting people to care. People already care. We have to create a space in order for them to express that. 
And did I mention that everybody that was working on the campaign was between the ages of 17 and 24 years old? We were working to get a 24-year-old Bozeman kid elected into the Montana State Legislature, and he was the oldest one out of all of us. So I know these photos are abstract representations, but this pretty much sums up what the campaign meetings look like. <laughs> so changing the world means that you're going against the grain of society, and you have to find the comfort in the uncomfortable. You never know if the next door you go to canvas, if there's gonna be somebody that's rude to you, and you never know where opposition's gonna be, but it's very important that you always greet it with kindness. So part of keeping people around to change the world is meeting people where they are, no matter where they are. And this is where the lesson my grandma taught me comes in. You have to pay attention to what you're doing and to where people are, or you risk destroying your relationship with them, therefore destroying yourself and destroying the movement. So growing up in my house is like growing up on the side of the Golden Girls. <laughs> and the final piece of this journey is from what my aunt taught me. The job of leaders is not to show up and be everybody's babysitter. Our job is to show up and be everyone's best friend. That way, when it's all said and done, they can come to you and say, thank you for being a friend. So together we changed the world, and we changed how we changed the world. And we didn't do it perfectly, but we always tried our best to focus on the people and the relationships with the people. Sometimes we got pushback for the way we did things, but we saw people as a crucial element to the sustainability of changing the world. So our entire campaign was paying attention, inviting people, and showing up for them. And as young people, we pulled some pretty great things off. We knocked 20,000 doors, raised $18,000, had one of the best volunteer programs for a legislative campaign in the state, and we got that kid on the left, Zach Brown, elected into office. So here's my declaration to you all. I have a dream and I'm gonna keep chasing it, so keep an eye out for me because you're gonna be seeing a lot more of me. But here's my hard ass to all of you. You have a dream and dreams change the world. So pull out your phone and text your best friend, ask them for their help, and I promise you they're gonna say yes because they've been waiting for you to ask them. And when you go out and embark on your journey to change the world, remember, that changing the world begins with you. It is progressed by them, and it is brought to completion by us. Thank you. <laughs>